Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. It's popularly said that the best story is the comeback story. I mean, just what would the hero's journey be without a start, a setback, and ultimate triumph? And like every other endeavor on Jazz Green Earth, the reggae scene has its own fair share of such examples of this. But in my humble opinion, no other comeback is as satisfying and epic as that of Jamaican reggae queen Don Penn. In 1994, this veteran songstress would literally set the world reggae and pop charts alight with her smash hit single, You Don't Love Me, No No No. That song became one of the biggest hits of that year across all genres and made Don Penn a household name all over the world. And anybody who was around back then will appreciate the kind of impact that it had. I remember the song being on heavy rotation on MTV and other cable channels that year for several months, as well as it being a dance floor filler at every club or party I was one of the millions of people captivated by that song, but I was shocked that I had never heard of Don Penn before that track came out. But one day, while visiting the home of my late uncle, who had been a staunch reggae fan since the 1960s, I took the liberty of grabbing his much prized remote control and flipping the channel from CNN to MTV. And lo and behold, it was Don Penn's No 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 that was playing. I increased the volume and bobbed my head to the rhythm, only to hear my uncle ask, Hey, isn't that Don Penn? I had her record in England in the 60s, and that outburst became my introduction to the awesome story of that gorgeous singer. It so happened that Don Penn had emerged on the scene in the late 1960s while still a schoolgirl and recorded for some of the biggest producers in Jamaica with limited success and sour experiences over three to four years before quitting music, leaving the island and embarking on a career in the corporate world before making a triumphant return to music more than two decades later, becoming a global sensation and one of the biggest artists on the planet in 1994. Let's take a look at the story of Don Penn and what I think is the greatest comeback in reggae music history. She was born in Kingston on January 11, 1952 and was something of a musical prodigy with classical training in music and learned how to play the piano and the violin before she'd even finished from elementary school. On top of her instrumental talent, she would hone her powerful singing voice in her local church choir by the time she got into high school. It was while in the fourth year at the Convent of Mercy Academy Girls High School in Kingston that she would fortuitously find herself in the music business. A friend of hers at school had an aunt who was married to Tyrone Evans of popular singing group The Paragons and they would sometimes find themselves hanging out at Beverly Studio, then owned by Chinese Jamaican producer Leslie Kong, where her friend's uncle would be recording. She was like a fish in water in that studio environment and would often go over there to play the piano and rehearse whatever songs that she had in her head. In those days at Beverly's, she would sometimes see stars and feature legends like Millie Small, Desmond Decker and Jimmy Cliff. Her then 14-year-old voice was mature and powerful beyond her years and would always blow listeners away. And before the year was over, she would record her first single titled When Am I Gonna Be Free that was produced by Derek Morgan. Her sweet powerful voice would quickly see her in high demand by producers like Prince Buster, for whom she would record the gorgeous and classy song Long Day Short Night. It didn't take long for her rich, wonderful voice and talents to get noticed by Coxon Dodd. After a quick audition in 1967, that legendary producer put her in the studio with the genius keyboardist Jackie Mitu and let her do a freestyle over the chords he was playing on the piano. And the result of that session became the first incarnation of the song You Don't Love Me, No No No. Studio One would eventually release that single and it became a massive hit in Jamaica before the end of the year. At just 15, she began to record for the likes of Bonnie Lee and Duke Reed, while still going to school like an average teenager. But sadly, she wasn't making any money at all, and she gradually began to explore other vocations like making hats and dresses, as well as doing some odd jobs anywhere she could earn some pocket change. After finishing from high school, she took courses in Lotus Database and Word Processing, things that seem normal today but were simply cutting-edge stuff in 1969 and she would quickly get work in several high-profile companies like Bank of Jamaica and National Import-Export Bank. And by 1970, she had all but been frustrated out of the music business and would suddenly get a massive urge to find her roots. It so happened that her late father had originally been from the US Virgin Islands and she desperately wanted to know more about him. So she would move over there and over the next 17 years would lead a regular 9-to-5 job life in the corporate sector, working in Barclays Bank and other top-notch corporate places. However, by 1987, she would move back to Jamaica, having been quite frustrated with life in the US Virgin Islands, though I personally think that it was the music that was pulling her back. As soon as she returned to Jamaica, she began to get her feet wet on the local music scene. 
Only this time, it was an entirely different setting as Rocksteady and Reggae had long taken back seats to dance hall, which was now the dominant sound that ruled the airwaves and dance floors. So she would quickly roll up her sleeves and adapt. She began to hustle on the local sound system scene and would also cut dub plates for quick cash here and there. Nothing glamorous at all and in fact, she was struggling. But after five years of grinding it out on the streets of Kingston, she got a break courtesy of her exploits from almost three decades before. In 1992, a big event was organized to mark the 35th anniversary of the founding of Studio One and several alumni of that illustrious musical outfit were invited to perform. Dawn Penn was among that esteemed group and she would perform the song which had been her biggest hit in You Don't Love Me, No No No, ably backed by legendary dancehall production duo Steely and Cleavy. That outing became a stunning success and the song's performance became the high point of that evening's affairs. She would be taken into the studio by Steely and Cleavy to re-record that song as part of a tribute album titled Steely and Cleavy Play Studio One Vintage the next year. And Don Penn's spectacular performance on that compilation saw Atlantic Records scramble for a signature and sign her up on an 8-year album deal in 1993. After almost 28 years after first entering the music business, she would release her debut album No 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 in 1994. And of course, the first single, You Don't Love Me No No No, would hit the streets in devastating fashion that year. It quickly went to number one on the Jamaican charts before hitting the UK singles charts and reaching number three in that country. It also went up the top 20 in the charts in Europe as well as New Zealand and the US. And let's not even go into the insane airplay it got on radio stations and cable TV around the globe, making Don Penn one of the biggest stars of 1994. The song would chart in 68 countries around the world and would be featured in adverts for brands like Nissan Automobiles and had been used over the years for several others and the most recent being the 2024 Calvin Klein advert that featured Idris Elba. Her lush and smooth vocals on that ballad would make it one of the biggest lover's rock tunes ever recorded. A dancehall remake of that track featuring Bounty Killer, Dennis Brown and Ken Booth produced by King Jammy would also become a global smash hit on the dancehall charts. And Don Penn would follow up her debut success with her next album, Come Again, in 1996 that was released on Trojan Records and has never looked back ever since. And she's been the recipient of numerous accolades over the years, like the Martin Luther King Awards in 2001 for her contribution to Caribbean music and recently received an Extraordinary Impact Award from Jamaican Reggae Industry Association in 2023. And for the past three decades, since she made her incredible return to the limelight, she's been thrilling fans at countless festivals all over Europe, America and Asia and at 72, shows no signs of slowing down. Not bad for a singer who was already a has-been by the age of 18. The music business is a very hard and unforgiving place and what Don Penn achieved with her astonishing comeback almost 30 years after she left it is something that we don't see very often. In my honest opinion, the most dramatic comeback in reggae history. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, jobless.